Hello humans, welcome back to my makeup room. My name is Martha if you've never been here before and I post makeup related videos every Monday, Thursday, and Saturday. If that's something that interests you and you like what you're watching, please subscribe. Today we're going to do a little sort of follow-up video to the what's in my Sephora fantasy basket video that's been going around. Now I did film this the Sephora edition. I will link it down below. But today I thought I would go in my little wish list and create a fantasy basket of everything not from Sephora that I want right now. Because at least half of my makeup collection is not from Sephora. You can't purchase it at Sephora. Probably definitely more than half I would say. So today I'm gonna go over what I would buy right now if I had a thousand dollars to spend solely on makeup. Let's get into it. Absolutely the very first thing I would go buy is makeup from Give Me Glow Cosmetics. I love their eyeshadow formula. I have discovered I have a selection of singles from them but I definitely want more. And I also want the Juicy Olive Palette. Do I already have army greens? Absolutely. Do I already have olive colors from their singles? 100%. Is that gonna stop me? No. So I want to get the Juicy Olive palette and then a selection of singles. I will show them in a picture, display them beside me, and that would come to... Oh, also, I've had to convert these all into Canadian dollars because even in my fantasy world, I have to pay an exchange rate. <laughs> so all of my selections from, from Give Me Glow would cost 180 Canadian dollars. Next up, I would make an order from Glossier. I've been wanting to try Glossier for quite a while now. I want to try the Wowder, their Play Liquid Highlighter, their Eyeliner pencils from the Play line. Teresa's Dead says they're very good. They have a couple of really cool colors. There's a nice mustard, which I think would be fun, and a dark teal. Those would be on the list. And I can never resist a lip balm. So I put the bomb.com on my little list. And that order from Glossier would cost $140. Next, I thought you know, what's extremely expensive, if money was no object that I would really want to try, one singular item, and that is the Viseart Grand Pro Volume 3 eyeshadow palette. Now this is a rainbow palette, but it has gradients from lightest to darkest, which is something I love in a rainbow palette, because you can make something monochromatic, you can blend things out with similar, similar colors. I've considered buying it before and I will just probably never be able to pay $237 for this eyeshadow palette, but fantasy money, absolutely. Another thing I really, really want to try is from Kiko and I've been wanting to try the Tuscan Sunshine Powder and honestly I would have bought this already if Kiko shipped to Canada. And if Ulta wasn't having a crisis, apparently Ulta is coming to Canada and that means they can't ship to Canada in the meantime. So I'm a little bitter at Ulta. Whatever. Anyways, and then the other thing I want to try, I would want to get from Kiko is one of their bronzers. I do already have one of their bronzers. But I chose to get the shade 2 and it's just a little bit too dark for me, even in the summer. I have been using it in the summer, but I would like to get a lighter one of these because it's a really nice bronzer and I would like to have one to use all year round. So that order from Kiko would be 42 Canadian dollars. Next up, I would place an order from Beauty Bay. I buy a lot of stuff from Beauty Bay. Um, a little less now that they've decided to cut their free shipping option, but I would still try some stuff out from there. First up, the Uoma Contour Stick. I've heard good things about that. The Suva 
uh, tracksuit liner, one of those water activated eyeliners, the uh, cobalt navy blue one, that one, and the Revolution Cut Crease Canvas. Not an expensive purchase by any means, but I think it would just be handy to have and I've wanted to try it. Nabla Lipstick in Backbeat. Cool Tone Nude. I really, I'm on the hunt for the perfect Cool Tone Nude. The Uomo Woke Concealer. I do have one. I'm getting near the end of this though. It is, I've taken out the stopper probably too soon, but I think it's okay. But this is too dark for me. This is in the shade T1 and they've expanded the shade range. They have lighter ones now, so I would love to have the lighter one because I know I'm gonna finish this and I love this concealer. The LA Girl Shockwave Neon Liner in Fresh. It's sort of like a bright, light teal and I think that would just be a fun little accent to have in the waterline. And the Nabla Skin Bronzing in Ambra. Ambra. I also considered just buying this, but I think it might be a little bit warm for my preferences. So I'm holding off on purchasing it myself, but if I had some fantasy money, absolutely, I would try it, no questions. So that order from Beauty Bay would total to $168. Now at this point, I was getting close to my total of a thousand. I think I had 200, 250 bucks left. And I was like, what else could I possibly buy? I was like, oh, brushes. What can I buy? Luxury expensive brushes. Now I didn't go a whole hog because I didn't want to blow my whole budget on brushes, but I wanted to throw in the Wayne Goss The Eye Set because it's a set of eye brushes. It's $176 which was not too bad, I thought, for some luxury brushes. I've heard good things about his brushes and also the shapes looked like they would work for me. They had more of a tulip tapered pointed shape to the blending brushes, which is my favorite kind of brush. Not for everyone. I heard Tina the Fancy Face rampage about how she hated that shape, but brushes are a very personal item and I think I would like that shape and that would be $176. And then Smith has one of my, Smith has my favorite packing brush for eyeshadows. This is the Arrowhead Small, I think. It's the 253. And it's just a tiny little packing brush and it has a little point. It's a little arrowhead. So you can get right into the inner corner with that one. And I thought I'll throw in the larger one because I know I love the shape, I know I love the quality, and sometimes you just want a big shadow brush to sweep across the whole lid instead of something so precise. And that brush would be $33. And then lastly, I had like $25 to spare. I was like, okay, I can get one more thing. What do I wanna just throw in? And I decided to go with the Lorac Luxe Diamond Cream in Cashmere. I saw Lauren May Beauty have this in her most recent like eye product declutter. It's like a cream shadow and it looked like such a unique shade, kind of like a taupey shade. And I just thought that would be such a good shade to have in one of those single shadow pots because it's a taupe and you can just put it on, blend it out, you're good to go. And it was more cool toned, which is definitely up my alley. I'm probably going to purchase this in the future, I just don't know when. Probably not anytime soon because I am on a no-buy. It's a sad life. And I'm only two weeks in. I'm on a no-buy until the Black Friday sales. I don't know how I'm going to do it. So for a fall sale, Black Friday sales, somewhere in there. Whenever they tend, whenever they pop up. Anyways, that Lorac product is $29. So that put me at $1,005, so I'm a touch over budget, but again, $1,000 of free money, I can chuck in five bucks. And I didn't want to just throw in something that was a little bit cheaper than the Lorac shadow 
for something I didn't really want because I do want to try that Lorac Shadow. Anywho, that's the end of this video. Let me know if you've tried anything on my wish list down below. Is it good? Is it bad? What are your thoughts? And don't forget to like and subscribe and ring the bell to become a Pavlovian dog. See you next time. Bye.